Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin. Dubious speculation. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Link is in the description below. Remember, the price of ITC Premium will be going up after the halving, so you can lock in the lower rate now. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, you may be wondering why I am not making the video titled Bitcoin Dominance. After all, we just saw dominance finally break to 56%. And this has been a level that we've been talking about for a long time. But there's two reasons why. First of all, my wife put out a Bitcoin Dominance video uh, a couple of weeks ago or so on April 1st. And frankly, I don't think there's anything else to add to that. It's about 30 seconds long. And I think it sums up what I would tell you over two hours, sums it up well in about 30 seconds. Second of all, all my, vid all my videos are Bitcoin Dominance videos. I just changed the title of the video to make people think that it's about something else. But in reality, it's all about the same thing. So with that said, let's just go in Bitcoin dubious speculation. We're going to pretend like we're going to talk about something else. But in reality, it will just go back to the same tired topic of dominance. But as I've said, Bitcoin dominance is the key to unlocking the secrets of the cryptoverse. If you care to understand the larger trends going on in it right now, before we go over to the Bitcoin dominance, mantra and all that stuff let's just take a look at bitcoin usd right we're going to assume at first that we know nothing about the rest of the cryptoverse in terms of alt bitcoin pairs um we're just going to look at bitcoin usd by itself right in a vacuum without any other knowledge okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say all right we had a major event by bitcoin in january and it was the spot ETF, right? It was the spot ETF. And what you'll notice is that Bitcoin actually rallied about a week before the actual spot ETF, before this one, and it swept the high right here, right? So you can see pretty clearly Bitcoin swept the high, right? Now, after sweeping the high, it actually went back down to near the range lows, right? So if you look at the range lows, you will see there was a, a, an initial wick down. But then the second wick that came ended up being basically where that this wick came after it swept the high, right? So you'll see a top, a slightly lower high, and then we swept the highs before getting a wick all the way back down to the bottom of the range, Right? It's pretty clear. You can see that. Now, we've compared this move to the current move to see are there any deviations in it or is it playing out the same way? Now, for a little bit, it was playing out the same way. You'll see that we had a high and then a lower high, right? If we just sort of remove all this other stuff for a minute. Just take a look at it like this, right? We had a high and then a lower high. And this down here, right? This is our this is basically our range low, right? Where you have a you know, you have this initial wick, kind of like this one. And then you come back down to put in this wick, which this one tested right here. Looks pretty similar. Right. But there is a difference. Right. There is a subtle difference. And what is that difference? It's that the third move did not actually sweep the high. Like this one did. Right. This one over here swept the high about a week before the spot ETF. And then after it swept the high, it went back down to the range low. Now, we just went back down to the range low. Right. It looks pretty similar. But there is a slight difference in that here we swept the high, here we did not. Now, this high here was actually slightly higher than this one, 
like this one was to this one, but it didn't take out this high over here. So there is a very slight difference between the two moves. And one of the explanations for that difference could be due to the fact that we've talked about sources of liquidity in the cryptoverse, right? You have three main sources that we talked about. You have the regular DCA -er that just DCAs no matter what, right? They don't care what anyone has to say. And frankly, they win over the long haul anyway, so who cares? You have the regular DCA -er who doesn't care about anything that anyone has to say. More power to them, by the way. That's not that's not a, a jab at those people. It's th these, these, these people do really well over the long run. You have those people. You have the spot ETF flows. And then you also, and the spot ETF flows to me are different than the regular DCA. The regular DCA who's been here forever is probably not buying spot ETFs. They're probably just buying Bitcoin because they don't want to pay a fee to some third party to hold their Bitcoin for them. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin, right? Or at least that's what you should have learned last cycle. Third source of liquidity. Where is it from? The altcoin market, right? That's where that third source of liquidity is from. And what you'll notice is that altcoins are starting to show some weakness, right? Some of them are showing a lot of weakness, right? If you look at a lot of these alts, they've broken down. ETH Bitcoin looks like it's breaking down. Still not a weekly close though, right? Still not a weekly close. Could we get one tomorrow? It's definitely possible, but we've been in this position before. And then it ended up being just a wick. Now, whether it's a wick or not, I do still think ETH Bitcoin will eventually close below the range low. Whether it's this week or next week, I don't know. But this source of liquidity for Bitcoin is drying up. Look at ADA Bitcoin. It broke below the range lows. Dot Bitcoin broke below the range lows. Matic Bitcoin broke below the range lows. Right? A lot of the altcoins are breaking below their range lows. And so one source of liquidity for Bitcoin is slowly disappearing. It's not that there's people not DCAing it. It's not that there's not people that are going to keep putting money into the, into the spot ETFs. It's just that there's one source of liquidity that has been there for the entire bull run, all the way from you know 15K, that now is not necessarily there anymore and so maybe that's why there is a slight deviation in it because again if you look at bitcoin usc in a vacuum you can see that there's a difference between this one and this one and then you're like well why is there a difference well in january eth bitcoin in january eth bitcoin was above 0.049 today it's not and so perhaps that's the difference, right? Liquidity is, is important for Bitcoin. And if it loses one source, it's not like it's completely gone. It's just not as powerful. And if you don't necessarily understand that, think about it like this. The purchasing power has gone down, right? So like as people convert their ETH to Bitcoin, they can get less and less for their ETH. So because there's less purchasing power to buy that Bitcoin, because the valuation of the asset that's being traded in for Bitcoin has gone down, there's a sort, you know, there, there's some liquidity that is dried up. Okay. So there has been a deviation from this one over here to this one, right? Now, what happened next was that Bitcoin, after going back down to the range low, it visited, it, it went back up to the top and it, it rallied into the launch of the spot ETF, right? It rallied into the launch of the spot ETF. Now, Will we rally into the halving? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I've said before, I, I think the way to navigate crypto uh, during quantity of tightening and high interest rates is just to be Bitcoin heavy as opposed to altcoin heavy, because guess what? Bitcoin dominance goes up no matter what. And this is a great example of that happening, right? Today or yesterday, we saw Bitcoin drop um, you know, about 5%. And guess what? Bitcoin dominance went up. And so had you held Bitcoin, you're still at, at, at 64K Bitcoin. You know, it's still basically at the 2021 highs. Had you held altcoins, you're nowhere close, right? You're nowhere close. I mean, a lot of these alts are so far down, right? Like ADA is at 44 cents. I mean, it's, it's, it's closer to the lows than it is the highs, 
right? Matic is closer to the lows than it is the highs. A lot of these dot closer to the lows than it is the highs, right? So that's why I say, you know, Bitcoin heavy is the way to go because even if Bitcoin gets a correction, it's likely not going to go down as much as alts. Bitcoin gives you the potential for the upside, but it also minimizes your downside risk. It doesn't mean there's no downside risk. Today shows you there's downside risk, right? But it minimizes it. Now, Bitcoin can still go down. I'm not saying that it can't. And, and to be completely honest, if all Bitcoin pairs break down, I would expect it to get a deeper correction. But they haven't broken down just yet. What do I mean by that? Didn't Ben just say that all these alts had broken down? Well, yes, it's true that ETH Bitcoin has broken down, right? It's true. And it's true that ADA Bitcoin has broken down and that DOT Bitcoin and that MATIC Bitcoin has broken down. But there are still some alts that haven't broken down yet. There are. Look at AVAX Bitcoin, right? I mean, it, it it's not, it's still well off these lows over here that it set back in October of 2023. Look at Solana Bitcoin, right? It's way back up here. Look at BNB Bitcoin. It's still nowhere near, near these lows. So it is true that some alts have already broken down, but there are other alts that haven't broken down. And when you look at them collectively, they're sitting on support, right? Look at a weekly, look at a weekly candle for alt Bitcoin pairs. They're sitting on support. Support is at 0.4. We're at 0.4. Why is that important? The reason it's important is because it was the weekly candle last cycle that closed below support that marked the local top for Bitcoin USD. It was precisely the week of June 24th where Bitcoin USD topped out, and that was when all Bitcoin pairs broke down. Okay? Now, here's where it gets tricky. I can't know if tomorrow alt Bitcoin pairs are going to close at 0.39 or below. I don't know. If they close at 0.4, then perhaps Bitcoin can get another move into the halving. If alt Bitcoin pairs break down this week, then there might not be enough liquidity to really send Bitcoin that much higher into the halving. So it's really hard to say. It's it, Again, it's like an if-then statement, right? If alt Bitcoin pairs stay above 0.4, then Bitcoin can get another move. If they break down, then you're likely looking at that's it. Last cycle, it actually took exactly 41 weeks after the range low was set for alt Bitcoin pairs to break down. We are in week 41, but that doesn't mean they have to break down this week. They certainly could, right? I mean, I... Frankly, that would be easier, you know, than having to kick the can down the road one more week. But my point is this, is that whatever happens next week, I'm guessing is sufficient to break all Bitcoin pairs down. Whatever happens next week. I don't know what that's going to look like necessarily. Okay. Again, if you go look at, at Bitcoin USD, and we, you know, we compare it to what happened going into the spot ETF, you can see that we actually visited the range low about one week before the spot ETF launched. The halving's one week away, and we just visited the range low here. So there is a chance, right? There is a chance that Bitcoin can get another pop-up into the halving but I, I, I really do think it depends on, on what all Bitcoin pairs do. Now, if there is a move into the halving, does it lead to a new high or not? I don't know. But if you look at this, if you look at this trend line, what you'll notice is that Bitcoin stayed above this diagonal trend line until after the spot ETF with the exception of some wicks. Okay, you see this trend line? With the exception of some wicks, it stayed above the trend line until after the major event occurred. Let's look at what's going on here. Now, it's going to depend on how you draw the trend line. If you draw it like this, it's already looking kind of iffy, you know? It's already looking kind of iffy. 
And you might argue that we already closed below it. But I imagine that you could kind of draw it like that. And if Bitcoin got back above this level today, then everyone's just going to say, well, it was just a wick, just like it was over here, you know? So watch carefully. I, I mean, really, I think what happens on Monday is, is going to basically tell us what's going to happen going into the halving. Because a lot of Mondays recently, we've seen Bitcoin pop up as those flows go into the spot ETFs. Well, let's see what happens to the spot ETFs on Monday, right? I mean, do, do the flows continue despite the pullback or does something else happen? I don't know. But look for this, right? Look for something like this to happen. If you wanted to be a little bit more, you know, conservative by this trend line and you just sort of connect it from this wick to the daily candle closes or something like that to this daily candle close, you can see that we fell well below it. So maybe you still get a move up into the halving, but what happens if it just ends up being a, a lower high, right? Where it just kind of comes back up here. Maybe it even goes up even higher, right? But it ends up just being a lower high. And then after the halving, you then actually sweep the low, right? So we, sweep, we swept the low over here, but it didn't occur until after the spot ETF. So perhaps we do eventually sweep the low and go below 60K, but you know maybe it doesn't happen until after the halving. I don't know. We actually got already, we already got pretty close, right? We went to 61K. It's not like it's impossible for Bitcoin to just wick to 59K tomorrow, but that just is showing you what happened during the last major event, right? We, we kept going up, and then after the event in question, we then finally fell down and then swept the low. Now, here's where things get tricky, okay? And this has been something that I, you know, we've been talking about forever. Every pullback that Bitcoin has had, every single one, has been 20 to 22% for the entire bull run. 20 to 22%, right? The major pullbacks, okay? And so far from this high up there to where we currently are, it's about 17.5%. Now, at some point, I'm going to guess that we're going to see that 20 to 22% pullback. Now, if it's from this high right here, then that would put you at around, you know, 57 to 59K, depending on if it's like 20% or 22%. If Bitcoin puts in a slightly higher high on the day of the halving, just like it did on the day of the spot ETF, and let's say it goes up a little bit higher, then it still, I mean, it still puts you at around that 58, 59K level. So then if we do test that level, in the coming couple of weeks or so, whether it happens before the halving or after the halving, whatever, and whether we put in a new high or not, whatever, right? These are all kind of details. I mean, you know, th this this channel, while a lot of people think it's for short-term trading, it's not. I mean, I, I, I literally just DCA when the risk levels are low and I DCA out when the risk levels are high. And then everything else is just dubious speculation for fun that some of you guys take to the bank and try to cash it in and often you get surprised when, the, when, the, when they don't accept it. I don't know what's going to happen in the short term. But what I will say is this, is that in 2019, we had a very similar thing where every single pullback was shallow and it, it left no room for anyone to get in. Okay, no, no room. But then at some point, we had a deeper correction where Bitcoin dropped from the high, from the high, here, it dropped about, it dropped down here before it got a, a move back up. It dropped 30%. So previously, we had only seen these shallow corrections. And then finally, we got a 30% drop. It's like, what's going on? Right? A 30% drop. And it was the first time we had seen a 30% drop in a long time. In fact, if you were to go look at the fear and greed index on that day when we got that 30% drop back in 2019, you can see that the fear and greed index was, I mean, it had a huge drop here, right? All the way down to 62. Right now we're still at 72, right? But a major drop in a really short period of time. So the 30% drop happened what was different? Why did it drop? Why did it drop 30% here and not over here, here, or any of these other corrections, right? 
Why was it that drop that it got a larger drop? Why that one in particular? Altcoins, right? It was, it was because altcoins, alt Bitcoin pairs had broken down. That's why a lot of people are, are you know, this, this correction feels worse than this one over here. Because look at this, you know, Bitcoin is still way up here. It's still way above where it was over here. But a lot of altcoins are not. I mean, ADA is below everything this year, right? Matic is below everything this year. DOT is below everything this year for the most part. Avalanche. I mean, it's, it's all the way back down here. So that's one of the reasons why I think it feels worse for people is because all these altcoins are getting rinsed. And why is that? It's because all Bitcoin pairs are breaking down, potentially, as Bitcoin dominance is finally breaking above the range high. We said before that this is a potential risk off signal. Now, you have to be careful with that sort of stuff because when you look back at this stuff in three years, it could very well have been a risk off signal. But on a one to two week time frame, who knows if we whip to a new high or not first, right? I don't know. It's not like it's not like if we did, it would invalidate everything else, right? It's possible that something like that were to happen. But you have to be careful, right? I mean, you have to be careful. I mean, last cycle, gold broke out the same time that Bitcoin dominance broke out. This time, gold broke out well in advance. So it's not like it has to play out the exact week, but it's it's close. It's close. So the reason that last cycle, Bitcoin finally got a 30% drop, right? A 30% drop was because all Bitcoin pairs broke down. And if you overlay all Bitcoin pairs right here, and you put Bitcoin USD onto this chart, you can see very, very clearly that Bitcoin topped when alt Bitcoin pairs broke down. Because that source of liquidity that Bitcoin was relying on for some of its move higher was gone. It's not like there weren't people still DCAing Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin just, I mean, it kept putting in lower highs for a while. There were still DCAers, right? There, were still some, there was still liquidity there. But the liquidity from the altcoin market was gone. And so Bitcoin found a local top. And then it bled for the next nine months, okay? So what would that look like, right? What would that look like if, if Bitcoin did something like that today, you know? And again, we'll, we'll look at two scenarios. One scenario where the local top is the top or one scenario where there's a slightly higher high going into the halving. So if this is the top and it's a 30% drop, it puts you at 51.5K. 51 and a half K. Huh. Why is that number interesting? Well, I'm glad you asked. The bull market support band, believe it or not, right, is right below or right right above that level, right? The bull market support band ranges from 52K to 54K, right? So a 30% drop from that level right? Actually, if I get it to the wick here, 30% drop puts you at around 51K, right around the bull market support band. Now, if there's a slightly higher high going into the halving, let's say you get a slightly higher high, kind of like we, we wicked above it over here, going into the spot ETF. If you get a slightly higher high going into the halving, um, let's say, you know, 75K or something, then a 30% drop gets you, you know, to, to 52 or 53K. But the bull market support band would be higher by that point too. But you can kind of see like it could theoretically make sense. And my point here is that I can't know if it's if we put in a higher high going into the spot ET or the 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 having or not. I can at least point out the similarities between this move here and this one. But I also feel like I have to point out the differences, right? And and this is this swept the high, this didn't. This diagonal trend line seems to have held. This one potentially has, but it's a little iffy, you know? I mean, you kind of have to be very generous to say that it's held. Um, 
So it's really hard to say, right? And, you know, you could get a situation where you rally back up to 70K and everyone thinks it's going to go to 75 or 80K and then it just tops out at a lower high. Going into the merge, actually, ETH topped out about a month before the merge. Um, you know, if you, if you guys remember that, right? So the merge was here in September and ETH USD topped out about a month before it, right? So there are some examples where instead of actually putting in the high on the event in question, you put it in a month in advance. And then on the actual event, you put in a lower high because every, you know, a lot of people are expecting it to be a higher high because, oh, it's a main event, but it ends up being a lower high. So you kind of have to be careful, right? It doesn't have to play out in any specific way, but I think that's what you have to look for here, right? You have to look at, at all Bitcoin pairs. Right now, they're at 0.4. Again, they haven't technically broken down yet. As much as it seems like they should have, considering the you know how bad alts have performed recently, they still technically haven't broken down. You want to see something else that's really interesting? Last cycle, after this final roll here, the first week was negative 4.5%. Look at this week here. Last week, it was negative 4%. Then the following week was about negative 10%. This week so far is negative 13. And then the following week was negative 12%, right? So my thinking here is whether Bitcoin puts in a higher high or a lower high during the week of the halving, I think all Bitcoin pairs could very well break down, okay? That's, my, that's what I think. I think that they're gonna break down. And the reason for that is because ETH is the index for the altcoin market, and it sure as hell looks like it's breaking down. And I think ETH is gonna break down durably because I've suspected that Matic Bitcoin is leading ETH Bitcoin. Matic is higher risk than ETH, and it's broken down a long time ago, and I think it's gonna, it's showing ETH the way, just like ADA Bitcoin has already broken down. Okay, so you can go look at, at Bitcoin USD. And we can compare, we can make all these comparisons to what happened back over here in the spot ETF and note some similarities and see some differences. So I'm open-minded. I'm, op I'm very open-minded for the week of the halving. Um, we've seen crazier things. I don't know if it can go put in another high or not before, you know, before it, it gets a larger correction. But I will say that if you see all Bitcoin pairs durably going below 0.4, which very well could happen next week, maybe even this week, right? I don't know. We'll have to see if we go below 0.4 by the weekly close. But if you see, I mean, let's look to see how close we are. So 0.4 is here. We'd have to go from where we currently are. All Bitcoin pairs would need to bleed about 1.5% to get back to 0.39. Will that happen by the weekly close? I don't know. If it doesn't happen by the weekly close then the implication is that maybe there's still some liquidity that can go back to Bitcoin and give Bitcoin a little bit more fuel going into the halving. If all Bitcoin pairs break down before then, then it could resolve like ETH USD did going into the merge where it's just a lower high. And if you look at, at Bitcoin USD, um, the high that it put in at least at this point was... March, you know, mid-March and, you know, about a month before, you know, before the, the halving. April does tend to be a point where, where Bitcoin can often kind of at least put in a local top for a while. It doesn't have to be like a major top, but I mean, even last year we, we found a local top in April and it actually topped out, you know, basically like April 14th. Um, in 2021, it actually topped out, I believe, April 14th. <laughs> I don't know what it is about April 14th, but... Uh, you got 2021 and 2023 where Bitcoin USD topped out on April 14th. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And then you go back to 2013. And once again, you find an example where Bitcoin finds a local top in April, on April 10th. Right? So you have all these examples where, where Bitcoin finds a local top in April. So because of that, I'm open-minded. 
especially as long as alt Bitcoin pairs have not broken down. Once they break down, I I think that could be you know that we, we could be just going in for sort of a, a, a summer lull, if you will, right? Um, so do be careful uh, with something like that. I mean, something like that could certainly happen. And the crazy thing, right? I mean, it, you know, if you're new to the cryptoverse, this is just one of those sort of those lessons, right? Look at Bitcoin. I mean, legitimately, it is basically still at the 2021 highs. Eve hasn't even made it there, right? A lot of these coins haven't made it there. I mean, even Solana has had a pretty good move, but it still hasn't made it to the highs. You know, and a lot of these coins are not even close to the highs and are actually, again, they're closer to the lows than they are to the highs. You want to hear some crazy statistics? Alt Bitcoin pairs went lower yesterday than they have since April of 2020, or really like March, a uh, March of 2021. That's how long it's been since alt Bitcoin pairs were that low. The last time, you know, others, a lot of people talk about others, which is everything outside of the top 10. Others Bitcoin, which has been used relentlessly to mock the views on Bitcoin dominance because it's been it's gone up a lot. It just in this wick here, it wiped out every all the gains that it had since July of 2023, right? And you want to see something crazy about others Bitcoin is that last cycle we saw it drop 60%, rally 60%, and then drop 60% as rate cuts arrived. Same thing here, right? Drop 60, rally 60, and then potentially drop 60 as rate cuts arrived. It's already dropped 30, right? So, I mean, I had some people saying, well, it's not going to drop the same way. It's already dropped 30. It's already dropped half, right? I mean, 60% would put it at, at, at 0.1. It's currently at 0.2. So it's already dropped half of what we said it was likely going to drop. And it did it in a week, basically. In one week, it dropped, it's dropped 17% this week. Right. And then I mean it dropped a little bit, obviously, before that, about 10%. But a lot of the move occurred in a single week. And that's what happens in the altcoin market, right? Like, you know, people watch it and they think, all right, it's not gonna drop, it's doing okay. And then you wake up one morning and, and all Bitcoin pairs are down 20%. And then the next day you think they're going to bounce and there's down another 20% again. That's what happened in, in 2019, right before rate cuts arrived, right? And it never let, it, it never let people get, get, you know, to, it, it basically trapped the, the altcoin holders because it dropped below support and everyone kept waiting for a bounce and it didn't bounce until 0.3, right? It's at 0.4 right now. It didn't bounce until 0.3, and then it only bounced back to 0.35 before going back down to 0.25. So that's why I think that ultimately all Bitcoin pairs are going to go down to here to 0.25, and they're currently at 0.4, which means that if I'm right, all Bitcoin pairs still have about a 37% drop ahead of them. All Bitcoin pairs, 37, 38% drop to get down to the range lows. Guys, again, if it can happen here, in 2017, and if it can happen in 2019, and if it can happen in 2020, and if it can even happen in 2021, why can't that happen in 2024? You might say, well, Bitcoin is, you know, there's more to the market. Well, I mean, you know, why did all Bitcoin pairs put in lower highs? <laughs> Especially considering that, you know, stable coins are included. Why did it put in lower highs? So you have to really think about, you know, what reason would cause them to go back up here before going back down here first, right? I think they will come back up here, but I think they're going to go down here first. So with Bitcoin, going back to, you know, to, to Bitcoin, the risk off signal, in my opinion, is the breakdown of all Bitcoin pairs. I made a video about this, uh, you know, every, well, I was about to say two days ago or something, but I really, I've made a video about this every day for the last like two and a half years. It's an if then statement again, you know, they still haven't technically broken down, right? I, I can't, I can't say they have I, again until you get a weekly close. It's still just a wick, you know, until you get a weekly close ETH Bitcoin. It certainly seems like it's breaking down, right? But until you get a weekly close 
And really, you want two weekly closes, right? I mean, sometimes you get a weekly close and it's like a fake out. Until you really start to get those weekly closes below it, it's still kind of premature to sort of celebrate, you know, the, the, the theory being correct, as much as I want to, you know? And, and it certainly seems like it's playing out. I mean, dominance put in new highs, again, right? Dominance excluding stable coins. <laughs> it is a Bitcoin dominance video, right? Bitcoin, ex uh, Bitcoin excluding stable coins put in new highs. And if it goes to the top of this wedge here, it means going all the way up to like 63 to 64%. So if that's excluding stables, if you include stables, if it goes up, you know, three to 4%, that puts it at 60%, which is the level that I've said forever that it's probably going to go to. 60% is the 618 retracement of the... Uh, uh, the, the fib retracement it is the 618 is 60%. That's exactly where dominance went last cycle from the breakdown point, right? It rallied to the 618. Back then it was 72%, 73%. Here it would be 60%. It's not that far away, right? I mean, we just got we just went up to the 0.5 and when Bitcoin dominance rallied to the 0.5 in 2019, that marked the top. If Bitcoin wicks higher next week, it still marks the top, right? I mean, it, it, three years from now, you're not going to look back at it and say, well, actually, you know, you're going to say, oh, I know to mark the top. Again, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to do that or not next week. I'm, I'm open-minded, right? I'm certainly open-minded, but I will say that I, I do think there is a strong case to be made that going into the summer, you see a 30% correction, Right. Whether it is from 73K and it goes down to 50K or whether it's from, you know, 75K and it goes down to 52K, I don't know. I don't know. But I do think there's a compelling case to be made that you will get a 30% correction before getting a, a you know, um, um, a, a sizable bounce. And, and actually, that's what happened in 2019 is – you had a 30% correction. You had a 30% drop. And then guess what? Bitcoin rallied back up. <laughs> you know, back almost to the, to the highs. And you know what's crazy about that is during that process, guess what happened? Bitcoin dominance kept going up. Kept going up. And Bitcoin dominance did not top until Bitcoin fell below its bull market support band. That's when it topped. Everyone keeps saying, when's it going to top? When's it going to top? Where is it going to top? Look at the last cycle. Bitcoin dominance topped right here, basically. Right, right before, right before Bitcoin fell below its bull market support. So that's probably when it tops. But guess what? We're still not there yet. And you know, you could still have a while of chopping around because I think that Bitcoin dominance is going to go to 60%. And in order for it to do that, it needs to chop the altcoin market up. And the way that it does that is it just keeps bouncing around, right? Because as it bounces around, all Bitcoin pairs keep going lower. So remember what we said before. All Bitcoin pairs go down no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. Bitcoin dominance goes up no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. It doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't go down. It just means that dominance is going to go up no matter what. So if you don't have a crystal ball like me, if you don't have one, if you do have one, then you're not watching them anyways. But if you don't have a crystal ball, and you want exposure to crypto, but you want like you, you want to try to maximize your risk-adjusted returns, one thing to do during quantitative tightening and high interest rates is to say, all right, I'll just stay Bitcoin heavy. And then I don't care what Bitcoin USD does, but later on, I can theoretically convert my Bitcoin to altcoins. Because the purchasing power of my Bitcoin to buy those altcoins will go up. And isn't that true, right? Look at these alts. They're getting annihilated on their Bitcoin pairs. They're getting absolutely destroyed. Bitcoin gave you exposure to the upside. So you get to enjoy the gains that come with it. But you also get to say, you know what? 
if at some point I want to convert to alts, some of my Bitcoin to alts after looser, looser monetary policy arrives, you have the luxury to do so. Because you just stuck with Bitcoin and you said, I don't know what Bitcoin USD is going to do. But when you're doing, when you're in a period of high interest rates and quantitative tightening, you're likely just going to see alt Bitcoin pairs bleed. And so now, even if Bitcoin were to drop to 50K or even worse, even if it were to go even lower in the summer, which it could. I mean, I'm not going to say that it can't. Look at this. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of different metrics that you can look at. Look at what Bitcoin USD did after rate cuts arrived in in 2019. It went back to the 100 week moving average. You see that after after rate cuts arrived here or as they arrived, Bitcoin fell. It fell 40 percent to the to the 100 week moving average. You know, I mean, a 40 a 40 percent drop from here would put you at 43 K. Right. The 100 week SMA coincidentally is actually back here where we broke out in October of 2023. Who's to say that can't happen? But guess what? Even if it does happen, you're still better off holding Bitcoin than holding alts for the most part. And guess what? There's also the idea of never let a good bubble go to waste. Right? Never let a good bubble go to waste. And what that means is when you look at something like the risk levels for Bitcoin, you don't know how high it's going to go. You don't know. I don't know. We don't know if it's going to go to the higher wristband or if it's just going to top out in the 0.7 to 0.8 wristband, right? 2019 topped out right here. So far, we've topped out between 0.7 to 0.8. But you never let a good bubble go to waste, right? It's always worthwhile to take a little bit of profits anytime you get a major bubble, whether it leads to new all-time highs or not, right? If, if I just stick to the risk levels, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to go up higher or not. But if you sell a little bit, right, if you sell like a small percentage as those bubbles form and you sell more and more as it goes higher, then at least six or 12 months from now, you can look back and say, all right, well, at least I took some profits, right? Especially if you get a large pullback. And by the way, I mean, one nice thing about a larger pullback would be that, hey, maybe it puts the whole left translated cycle theory to, to bet, you know? Um, you know, I, I'm still under the assumption here that that we're just a three-quarter delay. And you might say, well, a three-quarter delay, wouldn't that mean that that it would it would take longer than 2025? No, because if you measure it from the April top instead of November, a three-quarter delay basically puts all Bitcoin pairs topping in January of 2026, exactly where they topped in 2018, January of 2018, right? So it wouldn't be any different. And if you don't believe me, just look at all Bitcoin pairs and look at them like this, right? Let's let's just take a, 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 a bar pattern. Um, if I can find it. I do this all the time. You'd think I know where it is. If you look at all Bitcoin pairs here and you just say, all right, well, if you shift this over, like this or something, guess what? Where does this potentially top out? In Q1 of 2026, which is where it topped out over here, right? And then what's more fascinating is that you still have this parallel channel where alts are collectively bleeding back to Bitcoin. And then it plays out like it always does, right? And then maybe Bitcoin tops out in Q4 of the post having year, just when it always does. And once again, everyone in crypto is making it more complicated than it needs to be. You know, the process that we experienced last cycle was a nine-month bear market in sort of the middle of the cycle. After a mid-cycle top, we had a nine-month bear market. It was a six-month bear market, and then we had the, uh, the pandemic, right? We had a recession induced by the pandemic after a mid-cycle top. So if you do get a mid-cycle top, right, whether it's already in or whether you go slightly higher, and then you get a six-month correction back to say like the 100-week moving average, or maybe you get a recession and we go lower than that. It's not impossible if it can happen over here. Why can't it happen again? But even if that happens, what does history show us? History shows us that you can go from 
a low like 3,800 to a high like 64K in one year. So even if you were to get a correction from April until December, like 2019 happened after rate cuts arrived, you could still then see it, right, right? You could still then see it rally back up and top out in late 2025, right? So that's, I, I think that's kind of the important thing that I keep going back to is that a lot of these things have been delayed by, by three quarters. And I know there's been a lot of people that have been very much against all this monetary policy stuff and saying it doesn't affect crypto. How about now? I mean, you know, how about now that that all Bitcoin pairs are are, are bleeding and, and a lot of these altcoins are, you know, again, not that far off their lows. So we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens in the week of the halving. Um, I'm open minded. You know, I'm open minded. My main conviction is the dominance is going to 60%. And after it goes to 60%, I think there will be another correction after that, right? It, you know, the, the process to going to 60% could be like what happened in 2019, where it just kind of chops around for a couple of months. Um, that could be the process that gets you to 60% dominance. And then you could see all USD valuations go down after all Bitcoin pairs bottom because Bitcoin USD gets your correction. So that is something I think you look for later this year, right? 60% dominance as Bitcoin kind of chops around up in this range, then maybe a deeper correction sometime later this year, followed by a reason for the Fed to turn on the money printer, and then the markets go back up. But when the Fed turns on the money printer and they go back to loose monetary policy, then guess what happens? Then altcoins lead Bitcoin. Then what happens? Then altcoins go up against Bitcoin, no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. What has it been for the last two and a half years? What has it been for the last two and a half years? I've said it a thousand times, right? I've said it a thousand times. My, It's been alt Bitcoin pairs go down, no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. That's been the view, right? They go down no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. But once you go from quantitative tightening to quantitative easing, all Bitcoin pairs bottom. And then they go up with the exception of maybe the final, you know, a blow off top for Bitcoin USD. But then they go up no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD after the Fed starts to cut rates. So you could get to a situation where all Bitcoin pairs go up for a few months, but all USD pairs are going down because Bitcoin USD is going down, right? What have we seen for the last two and a half years? We've seen all USD pairs, we've seen all Bitcoin pairs go down no matter the direction of Bitcoin USD. For the last few months, we've seen all USD pairs go up because Bitcoin USD was going up, but all Bitcoin pairs were going down. You could see the reverse of that after rate cuts, right? You could see all USD pairs go down but all Bitcoin pairs go up. And then on the last rate cut and the shift from quantitative tightening to quantitative easing, then all Bitcoin pairs, then all USD pairs go up a lot, right? And then you get the alt season that you've been dreaming of. But I don't, you know, I, I still think that that alt season that you want is still a little ways off, right? I still think it's a little ways off. Um, So yeah, I mean, those are my views. The other thing to look at with Bitcoin um, is the eight week. Okay, so you know, if if the bulls want a compelling reason to get a strong rally into the having, then I think you have to see an eight week estimate, a, a close above the eight week moving average, right? The eight week SMA is at sixty five point five k. Right now, Bitcoin's at sixty three point seven k. So. The, they, they, you know, the bulls have some time to try to get back above the eight week. Even if they close below it, technically, it doesn't necessarily mean anything unless you get another close below it. So, like, let's say you get a close below it and then you get another close below it, then it could be somewhat problematic. Um, but that's where the eight week SMA is. And and then the bull mark support band, of course, is, is all the way down here. So a lot of things, I mean, a lot of things to consider. And, and you know, I mean, the initial reaction off the bull mark support band 
you know, could be a bounce. I mean, we, we saw that back over here in 2019. But one of the issues is that you could, you know, are we too far gone? Has it been too long since we tested it? And sometimes when that happens, you, you then fall below it for a, a, you know, a few months before you can try to get back above it. So we'll see. That all, all, I think all these are going to be topics we're going to be dealing with this summer, right? In the meantime, I still think there's going to be kind of a big question mark for like the next week or two as the having sort of comes into play. And But then as we get into like May and June and July, I, I think we're going to be sort of wrestling with, with Bitcoin, getting back to the bull market support ban. Um, and, and it could be a combination of, of the bull market support ban going up and, and then Bitcoin sort of just chopping around in this range until it finally you know, gets down to the bull mark sport ban. And then from there, um, if it were to play out like 2019, then you could get a brief downtrend below it until until there's, you know, until looser monetary policy arrives in mass, right? Not just a token rate cut, not just a 25 basis point, no one cares rate cut, but a 200 basis point rate cut. You know, a 200 basis point rate cut is what leads to that kind of stuff in QE, right? A 25 basis point rate cut can still lead to this, right? You don't believe me. Just look at U.S. interest rates. Look at what happened last cycle when they cut 25 basis points. Look what Bitcoin did. Bitcoin did not give a flying you-know-what when the, when the Fed cut 25 basis points. You know, they cut here, and then they cut again here, and then they cut again here, and Bitcoin just went down. And then Bitcoin then, we had a recession, induced by black swan admittedly and then the fed cut a lot and then bitcoin was like oh free money new highs so those are my views right um those are my views and i i do think that with altcoins it's it's this it's this area right here where they get really interesting right and another area another way to look at that is to look at the social risk Right. Look at where look at the social risk is at point one eight five. Where did altcoins get really interesting last cycle? Where did they bottom out? Did they bottom out when the social risk bottom out? No, they didn't. Social risk bottom out when the Fed paused rates. Social risk here bottomed out when the Fed paused rates. Social risk went up and then social risk went back down, put in a higher low. And when social risk put in a higher low, guess what happened? All Bitcoin pairs bottomed. So that is coming probably this summer, where all Bitcoin pairs come back down here, right? And they bottom during the dog days of the summer. And then in here, you'll likely see all Bitcoin pairs bottom, and then all USD pairs will go down commensurate with Bitcoin USD. So then what essentially happens is that, like, you know, it's not as clear that Bitcoin it has the best risk adjusted returns because all Bitcoin pairs have bottomed out, right? For the last two and a half years, Bitcoin has because all Bitcoin pairs are in a downtrend. But if they, if all Bitcoin pairs bottom out, then you get to a point where Bitcoin, you know, you know, then you get to a point where you're like, well, these, these alts are down so much. And now you're going back to looser monetary policy, right? And then you get to the point where, yeah, you're going to take on more risk to buy an altcoin, but there's a lot more reward. For the last two and a half years, it's been, well, altcoins are more risk and you're getting less reward. Yes, I know there's some that have outperformed Bitcoin, but collectively they have bled against Bitcoin. So that is kind of the shift in the cryptoverse that's probably going to happen in the next three to six months. And that is ultimately where, you know, I, I think we're headed. Um, and I, I think a lot of the charts support that view. And uh, we will just kind of see what happens going into the summer, right? We'll see what happens going into the summer. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens with Bitcoin the week of the halving. My guess is that, you know, something's going to happen in the market where, you know, it, it's going it, to it's gonna like throw people a curveball or something. But it's dangerous at this point for, you know, for alts because ETH Bitcoin looks like it's breaking down. Bitcoin dominance is breaking out. So, you know, I, 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 even if Bitcoin gets a bounce, all that it would do is just wreck altcoins even more on their Bitcoin pairs. Yes, alts would go up on their USD pairs if Bitcoin bounced, but 
they would just get wrecked on their Bitcoin pairs. And that is all that matters, right? I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going on the tirade forever, but for a few more weeks, right? That is all that matters is their Bitcoin pairs. So let's look to see if Bitcoin dominance can make that move to 60%. We've hit a lot of the thresholds that we've said. Gold has broken out. ETH Bitcoin has broken down, but not convincingly yet because it's not a weekly close. All Bitcoin pairs still at 0.4. You need to see them at 0.39. If they're at 0.39 and below, that's probably it for the altcoin market for a while, for at least three to six months. Okay? It's a risk off signal, like it more than likely, just like it was last cycle. So you have all Bitcoin pairs close to breaking down. You have ETH Bitcoin that's already technically broken down. We just need the weekly close to confirm. You have others Bitcoin, which just took out all of its gains since the summer of 2023. You have blue chip dominance, which is near 73%, which is the risk off signal that still needs to happen. And it probably will happen the week of the halving. You have gold that broke out long ago. It's already at 2300, which was, you know, a, a potential shift in the cryptoverse. You have USDT dominance, which hit the same trend line. It always hits that bounces off of. That doesn't mean it can't come back down and hit it again, just like it did over here in 2021. But this is the same trend line it always bounces off of. And if it does come back down and bounce off this trend line in April or May, guess what? Maybe Bitcoin went higher, but all USDs, all USD pairs probably just put in a lower, a lower high, right? So you have to be careful. I mean, this is one of those things where I feel like a lot of people got in trouble in 2021, and I'm trying to like say I, I want to be more open-minded because in 2021. Bitcoin, the risk metric that I use, it hit the highest wristband in like, you know, in February or March. And then it went slightly higher in April, right? And so it, it sort of drew a lot of people in and they're like, oh, well, the risk metric is wrong. And it just drew a lot of people in just for it to only go like another one or $2,000 higher. And then it still came crashing down. So, you know, I would say be somewhat open-minded about that. But in 2021, you can see we only tagged it once. In 2020, we only tagged it once. In June 2019, which is kind of like where we are now, I think it only tagged it once. A lot of times we're only really tagged it once. But at least, you know, 2021 can show you that sometimes you can ride that trend line for several months. So be open-minded, but that is the trend line that it is always bounced off of. And perhaps this time is not any different, right? Just perhaps. So those are the things that I think we are looking at. And one more thing. I know a lot of people keep saying, well, rate cuts aren't going to happen until September, right? What have I said forever? Forever. The pricing out of rate cuts will likely cause them to get priced back in. We've gone from six rate cuts priced for 2024 down to now only two. And look what happened when we went from six to two. All Bitcoin pairs are getting annihilated. Does the Fed care about all Bitcoin pairs? No, hell no. But they care about the consumer and the consumer, the, 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 the glimpse into the consumer can be seen through the altcoin market because we're all degens at heart, right? Deep down, even the Bitcoin maxis, there's a little bit of a degen among us all, right? Because even Bitcoin is risky. You know, it's not like it hasn't, doesn't have any risk. Every, every few years it drops like 80%. So there's, there's you know, there's a degen. We're, we're, all, we're all sort of... Um, Degens at heart. So keep an eye on that, right? Keep an eye on on that as well uh, as we, you know, as we continue to um, uh, go forward here. And my guess is that, you know, I mean, I mean, just a couple of days ago, the, the market was is saying not no rate cut until September. Now it's saying no rate cut until July. But with this sell off, <laughs> with this sell off, um, I can easily see that being shifted to June easily. In fact, I'll tell you something crazy. If I were not looking at this, if I were not looking at this at all, and I didn't see what the market thought, like only a 6% chance of a rate cut in May, if I didn't see that, and I was just looking at this, then I would be tempted to say they might cut in May, as crazy as that sounds. And the only reason I say that is because if you look at all Bitcoin pairs last cycle, the Fed legitimately cut like just a couple of weeks after they broke down. Right? I mean, really, right here, like the all Bitcoin pairs broke down the end of June, and then the Fed cut in July. So if I were only looking at all Bitcoin pairs. Assuming they break down, which they technically haven't yet, but 
if they do, and I were only looking at this, I would say the Fed is going to cut in May. But I'm not just looking at that. I'm also looking at what smarter people than me think. And they're saying no rate cut in May. And the Fed has said no rate cut in May for the most part. I mean, like, they've, they've all sort of, like, walked it back, you know? But watch what the Fed does, or watch what the Fed does, not what they say. I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing it's not going to happen in May. But I will say this, that if it doesn't happen in May, that doesn't mean it's the right decision. It could be a policy mistake for them not to cut in May. And you might say, well, how can you say that? Inflation just came in and it's so hot, right? How can you say that? It's true that inflation is hot. But monetary policy operates with long and variable lags. It does. And it, when, it, when it drops, it can drop quickly. And a lot of the reason this has gone up, if you look at contributions per category, it was because housing went up. You know, if you look at headline inflation and you look at, at the contribution that came from the housing market, it's mostly housing. Housing makes up two of the three and a half percent. And that's a lagging market, right? That's a lagging market. Housing lags. So I, I look, there's a they're, they're, good chance they're not going to cut in May. But I'm just saying, if I were only looking at alt Bitcoin pairs, assuming they break down either this week or next, I would say they're gonna, they, they probably should cut in May. If alt Bitcoin pairs bounce again and we kick the can down the road once again, then fine. You know, fine. But if I were only looking at that, I would say they need to cut in May. They're probably not going to cut in May. And maybe they don't in June. But the longer... And guys, remember, I know the monetary policy stuff doesn't interest a lot of people. And a lot of people are saying they're hell-bent on no rate cuts at all this year. But I will just say this. In 2022, when everyone was telling you that there's no way they were going to go above 3.5%, and I said the terminal rate is likely at 5.5%. Now, it seems like I'm the one saying we're going to see rate cuts before most people think. And now, all the comments are saying they're not going to cut this year. The Fed reacts a lot quicker than I think investors think they will. You know? And, and I, I, I think when no one thought they were going to go to 5.5%, they did. And now so many people think they're not going to cut this year or it might only be one cut. And I, I think they're going to cut. I do. I really do think they're going to cut because all it takes is the pricing out of rate cuts to cause them to get priced back in because people throw in the towel. And when people give up, when the consumer gives up, that's when the Fed comes to the rescue. That's when they come to the rescue once everyone has finally given up. So that's what I think awaits us this summer. Those are my views on Bitcoin USD. I'm open-minded to Bitcoin USD going into the week of the halving, especially considering what happened in its body TF. Counterpoints that it topped out. ETH topped out a month before the merge. It's possible Bitcoin tops out a month before the halving. Um, so don't discount that idea. But also don't take that to the bank. We saw Bitcoin go to the range lows a week before the spot ETF. So far, this is the same thing. Main difference is that a week before the spot ETF, it also swept the high. This time, it was a bit weaker. Didn't sweep the high. The reason I think it didn't sweep the high and go above it is because all Bitcoin pairs are breaking down. And back then, they weren't, right? Back then, ETH Bitcoin was above support. ADA Bitcoin was above support. DOT Bitcoin was above support. Matic Bitcoin was above support back in January. Today, they're below support. And so I think that is the reason why Bitcoin did not sweep the high. And that was why it was a little bit weaker last week than it was the corresponding week in January, a week before the spot ETF. It all comes back to liquidity. And the jaws of liquidity opened long ago, long ago. And I told you guys many, many times that you cannot use liquidity to tell you where all or where, where risk assets are going on their USD pairs. If you look at, 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 at this, you can see the jaws opened long ago. But you know where the jaws never opened up? On alt Bitcoin pairs. Because alt Bitcoin pairs show you 
that liquidity has been getting sucked out of the cryptoverse. Just because Bitcoin USD went up doesn't mean liquidity wasn't getting sucked out. Bitcoin USD went up because all people were converting their alts to Bitcoin. As liquidity goes down, all USD, all Bitcoin pairs have gone down. It's not unique to crypto. This isn't some type of like major breakthrough in 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 with investing. I think it's just there's a lot of investors in crypto that are not as familiar with how things work in traditional markets. But the same thing happens there. Look at the Russell divided by the NASDAQ. It also has been bleeding because these micro cap companies keep bleeding to NVIDIA, Apple, and Microsoft and Google, right? It's the same exact thing. The jaws of liquidity open for risk assets on their USD pairs, but the jaws of liquidity have not opened for risk assets on their blue chip pairs. So all Bitcoin pairs, Rivian Tesla pair, Lucid Tesla pair, right? Jaws of liquidity never opened there, but they opened on the S&P. They opened on Bitcoin because people go from high risk to low risk during tighter and tighter monetary policy. And that I think is where we find ourselves today. So look for Bitcoin to chop around for the next month or two, go to 60% Bitcoin dominance, eventually go back to the bull market support band, whether we put it on, you know, whether we go back up or not between now and then, I don't know. And then from there, I think, you know, we will probably fall below it at some point. And then when we fall below it, we find out what the Fed's gonna do for, um, you know, for, for risk assets. And then once they start printing again, then we'll likely go back up. Um, but then we just kind of worry of, did they stay the course long enough to avoid a second wave of inflation? So I was wondering if I could, um, there is, there is something I posted. Um, let me see if I can post this to, uh, post this on here. So I'm going to try to grab this. So we'll see if this works. Okay. So I, I, I posted this to ITC Premium back in January, January 2nd of 2024. These are my views. These are my views. If my views in the market are correct and they never are, you can see I was, I was, um, you know, showing a lot of confidence, right? If my views are on the market correct and never are, then I would say Bitcoin USD stays strong until approximately 56% dominance, which occurs before the first rate cut arrives, right? We're at 56%, first rate cut has not arrived. At 56% dominance, ETH Bitcoin is broken below 0.049, right? We just saw that, it's below 0.049. We still need the weekly close. The Fed starts to cut in H1 2024. I don't know, right? Are they gonna cut in May or June? Maybe not May, could be June. We'll see. It, I mean, it could be July. That statement could be wrong. People celebrate and buy risk assets because solution monetary policy has arrived. Unfortunately, a 25 to 50 base points does nothing to save the labor market. Just like it didn't, just like it didn't help crypto in 2019, the first 25 base point rate cut. Market just went down. If anything, it's an acknowledgement by the Fed that the economy is weakening and the Fed is being unwilling to cut enough to change the trend. Then Bitcoin gets a big drop, and during that drop, Bitcoin dominance goes to 6%. Because the king of the alts, ETH, has broken down, it no longer has any hiding places on its Bitcoin pair, and it's free to drop to the 0.03 to 0.04 range, even on a Bitcoin USD drop. Because dominance is at 60%, people start buying alts thinking they have bottomed against Bitcoin, and they probably have. But then their alt USD valuations go down, commensurate with Bitcoin USD, because the Fed is still unwilling to cut enough. And finally, risk assets, you know, these altcoins, find a bottom. And then we spend the next year wondering if they stay the course long enough to keep inflation from coming back in a second wave. So you could get an example, right, where the Fed doesn't cut, they don't cut, they don't cut, or they don't print. And then finally, like, all right, we'll print. And then the markets go back up. And then a year later, we're like, oh, crap, another wave of inflation. Now we have to have another bear market, right? Something like that could happen. Again, this is one potential narrative. I could come up with many plausible narratives as well. There's just one narrative that fits the most closely that fits most closely with my prior views in the market expressed over the last couple of years. So those are my views going into this year. Um, so far it seems to be playing out, but I got to tell you guys, you know, I don't have a crystal ball and a lot of these things could turn out to be wrong just because the first sentence turned out to be right. Doesn't mean the rest of it will, but those are my views on the market. 
we'll see if it continues to play out or not. And I, I think we're gonna we're gonna find out soon enough. All right, we should be finding out in the next uh, couple of months or so. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We have a website with tons of stuff, tons of charts on not only Bitcoin, but on altcoins and social metrics and on-chain metrics, not just for Bitcoin, but for altcoins too. You can call me a Bitcoin maxi all you want, but we have a great website for a lot of different altcoins. We have a website for a lot of different stocks as well. In fact, you can, you can sort by all these different altcoins. Uh, you can click on an altcoin and then sort by that altcoin. Um, let's say you click on Ethereum, it'll then pull up all these charts for Ethereum. Let's say you don't care about crypto, which I don't know why you're here if you don't care about crypto. Uh, but if you want to go look at equities, you can sort by stocks. And then if you click on a, on a chart, it'll pull that chart up for that stock. So a lot of different things you can look at. And we also have the macroverse for the people like me who get excited about these monthly prints to see how it's affecting the overall economy. We also have a lot of macro stuff. Um, so a lot of different things here. Links in the description below. Check it out. Sales going on right now. Price are going to go. Sales going to end, and the price are going to go up after the halving for new people. So if you want to lock and lower rate, now's the time, and we will see what happens for the rest of this cycle. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. We'll see what happens the week of the halving. See you guys next time. Bye.